everyone. This is Bob Hood uh, with uh, Spotlink. Welcome to another one of our Tech Talk series. But this one is a special one to uh, our colleagues who also use Autocast. So we're gonna head upstairs here and kind of show you a new timer product that uh, we've implemented. Okay, so we're here in the Spotlink office now. Uh, we're gonna walk on back and talk to uh, Vince Castellano. He heads our software development group and he can come on back and he can kind of go over with you uh, some of the benefits uh, that the timer has given us, some of the obstacles it's overcome, and how it's helped us uh, increase uh, efficiencies and gotten some additional benefit out of it. Hi, Vince. Hi. Hi. Thanks for uh, taking some time to kind of show us what, yeah, no what you've been working on. So tell us a little bit about the timer and your perspective of uh, of what is over what we've uh, gotten out of it. So when we moved to, to Autotask for all our time tracking um, and moved out of our old system, we gained a lot of value in being able to tie time being spent to ticket, individual tickets and tasks. Um, but one problem that was presented was we use the, our time system for payroll as well as billing. Um, and a lot of the Autotask timing features um, have, a, have problems with being able to make sure that you're tracking all of your time as well as preventing overlapping time, which both for accurate billing and for accurate payroll present quite a number of problems. Um, so we did build a system that kind of enforces all of those things. It allows us to import it directly into our payroll system um, and have what we believe is probably the most accurate billing for the clients as well, um, as well as efficiency and ease of use, because um, the easier it is to use, the more likely the, the employees and the techs will be able to keep their data in correctly. So I can show you a couple features here of- Yeah, kind of come on over. It up. So uh, he'll show on this screen here. Yeah, so- um, Can you kind of explain what we're seeing here? So here we have a, 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 a few key features. So here is a list of all the time entries that we have um, that's running for me today. Um, I can see at a glance how many hours I have clocked today. Um, I can click on any one of these to get some inf details on them. Um, and this is all a web-based app, right? And this is completely web-based. Um, right now, the, the integration is, in, uh, the authentication is integrated to our AD, so just by having logged into my user, I'm in the system, but there's many different uh, authentication and backends we could use. And that also logs you into Autotask as well with it, so it Correct. couples it all So there. it's coupled, so it knows my Autotask user, um, the time that's kept in here is kept in a separate database while it's being um, worked on. Um, when it's submitted at the end of the day, which I can show in a few moments, um, it actually gets submitted to Autotask and it uses all of Autotask's native time, um, which means that you don't lose any of Autotask's features, time tracking, time sheets, all those things. All you get is a better ease of use and enforcement of, of policy. So. Um, for example, if I have this Spotlink internal timer running here, um, in fact, one, one feature I want to highlight is we do have a couple ways to generate new timers. Um, the internal timer is special. Um, one of the features that Autotask lacked was a good way to track what time was being done internally. Um, for both costing and for payroll, that was really important to track that and what they were doing. So we treat that as any other time. So we have notes. Um, for that just as well. Um, and then here we can see another, um, you know, login password. You can have notes here, you can have time, um, and you can move time. So let's say that, you know, you have this timer running and you're running on this and you get a phone call, you get distracted, someone comes into your office to film a video. Um, you want to be able to move your time because you're not necessarily at the, at the console. You can right click, go to move time, put how much time that you were spent on another thing. Often on a phone call, it's easy to see how, to, how long the runtime of the phone call was. And then pick another timer, and that'll subtract from the one you were looking at and move it over to the other one. So that's one of those efficiency features that helps keep accuracy. If they're not having to manually add and remove, mm -hmm. they're more likely to use it, more likely to stay accurate. However, you can manually edit here. Um, when, you do, when you do edit it, you can put here, you can see it shows, um, if I say put this up to 55, you can see what your net change is gonna be, um, and then save that as well, and that will adjust your time. Um, when you're creating a timer, there's three different ways you can create a timer. You can stick a ticket number directly in here, um, and it'll verify that it's a good ticket number, and you can go ahead and uh, run off with it, and it'll create a timer for it. 
Um, in this case, it's a duplicate of that other one. And that starts the timer on that one right away, right? When you're creating your so own. that that is true by default. Um, there's a checkbox here that you can make it not do that if you want to pre-create a bunch of timers for a bunch of work you're about okay. to do. Um, so this is running a little slower. This is a uh, in a debug environment right now. So um, do keep that in mind. Um, so there's here's tickets that will show where you can find tickets you already have. And here you have where you can create a ticket from scratch. So if I want, say, a spot link, it'll autocomplete, fill in um, pretty quickly. And then you can pick your work type, which again comes from your Autotask system. Um, test ticket. We'll create a ticket in the system. Um, description. And that will create the ticket in, the, in Autotask and then start a timer for that one. Um, so this one should populate here in one second. And then here we have ticket created in Autotask. If we were to click here, we can bring up the ticket directly from a timer. Okay. So this is the, the, time, the ticket we just created here. Um, the memos here will auto-sync with the server as you're typing. Um, so you'll see if I type in here, the box is red. That means that it hasn't sent it to the server. Um, but if I pause for a second, it goes green. That means okay. it's synced to the server and that has been saved. So if your computer shuts down, if you disconnect, you want to connect to it from another computer, that timer is, well, that's, that, that, there. that's all there. Um, same thing with changing these. These are all instant and go to the back end. So okay. if you change the work type, if you change the billing date, um, if you change whether it's billable or show on invoice, those are all going to reflect okay. um, on the back end on the, on the server. Um, you can also change the ticket for any given... Uh, timer if you created it against the wrong one or if um, the work you're doing actually applies to another ticket and you realize that as you're okay. going. Um, so those are kind of some of the the features there. Um, when you're starting and stopping, if I were to try to start one, it will stop the others implicitly. That's enforced okay. on the server. So you can never start um, two timers at once. Okay. So that's kind of built into the system to avoid... Uh, uh, double time entry exactly so um, and if you if you're in a ticket so let's say that you're in a ticket on in Autotask and you're working from the Autotask side you can also create a live link here that says start timer for ticket um, this is nice when you're going through your tickets in Autotask um, you can hit this it'll automatically kick off a process start the timer um, and then you'll we'll see here there's going to be a um, Ah, because it, we already have a timer for that one. Okay, so it just went into that yeah, one. Yeah, okay. but that's going to be the workflow okay. for, for seeing that. So you can create them inside the ticket. You can also, on here, can't you create a memo directly from the So if timer? you want to create, um, there's this quick note feature. If you click here, this will open up the Autotask interface for the quick notes. Okay. So you can create a note right in here, um, testing, um, quick note, um, save and close. You don't have to open up the whole Autotask in interface, wait for the ticket to load, all those things. That was relatively quick, and you can see here um, on the ticket itself that this was added as a note there. Great, right in okay. There. Um, so at the end of the day, when you're done, you can either, you can right-click and you can submit a ticket, submit a timer, um, you can delete a timer, um, but you can also submit and close. So if the work you've done, you're ready to submit your time and the work on the ticket is done, mm -hmm. you get this special dialogue. Um, you can create a note at closing, you can set the ticket resolution, um, and you can also adjust your time memo here. Um, and when you finally click submit, that'll go to the back end and actually apply against that, okay. that timer and, and submit your time. Great. You can also hit submit all timers. That will enforce certain things like notes have to be filled in, okay. so you can't have any empty timers, um, as well as making sure any contract rules in Autotask are applied. So if you try to submit time for a certain work type that's not valid for that client and contract, it'll tell you when you're trying to submit the time. Okay. So we've actually been using this internally for all our staff. A year. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Um, and we've, we've been integrating it with QuickBooks and, and doing our payroll system with it. Um, yep. So been working nice and steady. Yeah, and uh, it has, has honestly, it has been, it is what allowed us to transition into Autotask okay. um, with confidence. Okay. Well, thanks, Vince. Really appreciate that. Yeah. So, if you want to, so anyway, um, that just want, that's kind of quick overview. There's a little more details, but that's a, a pretty good summary of it. Um, if you have any more questions, you can give us a call. We can be reached at area code 858 703 5500. 
asked to speak with uh, either myself, Bob Hood, or Vince Castellano. Thank you for watching.